Hello and welcome to Bevy of Basics. In this episode, queries. In this video, we will start with a concept overview going into how Bevy implements queries, followed by some use cases, and then some examples of where you would use queries. Because the ECS breaks the data related to an object down into its atomic components, it is necessary to have some sort of mechanism to gain access to these disparate parts. This is done with a query. A query is a request to all the entities in an ECS world that meet the criteria it specifies. In this diagram, the green box represents the query's criteria. In this case, all objects with a component one. Queries can cover all sorts of different specifications. In this diagram, the query requires that the object have both component one and component two. Multiple queries can be acquired at the same time as long as they do not conflict. In this diagram, a query for all entities with component one is sent, while separate queries are sent for all entities with components three and six. Queries can have filters applied to them. In this diagram, the first query is for all components that also have a component six but the component six is not required to be returned. It just needs to be present. The second query is all entities that contain component three that do not contain a component eight. It should be possible to apply multiple fil filters. Uh, in this diagram, all entities with component two are returned as long as they have both component one and three present. Two queries cannot run at the same time if they conflict. To get around this, it is possible to use a with with not restriction. In this diagram, the first query will return all entities with component 2 that have component 1, and the second query will return all of the entities with component 2 that do not have component 1. This means that it is impossible for the two queries to share entities. Queries should not impact the state of the world, and queries do not copy data, they are simply access to that data in the world. In this diagram, two systems can be run in parallel because their queries do not conflict, but the third system must be run separately because its query conflicts with one of the other two queries. Bevy uses references to structs that implement the component type, as seen here, or tuples of these queries here as their input for the query. To increase Bevy's ability to parallelize systems, a query is only given mutable access if the query specifies that it needs it in its signature. This allows for, for systems to safely run in parallel without overlapping queries and risks of data races. As seen here, these two queries can run in parallel despite the fact that they both need the name component, they only require read access and so do not conflict. Whilst this third one conflicts because it needs mutable access to the names, so there is no guarantee that it won't modify the name while the other two queries are trying to read it. This system would have to run separately. Bevy allows you to wrap a component in option if you do not require it for a match, but if it exists you would like the data to be available as seen here. It is possible to use entity in the query's input. This results in the entity of the object that this... This results in the entity of the component that matched this query being returned with that query. Bevy implements a handful of filters that can be applied to a query after the... after the match parameters, as seen here. As of the making of this video, Bevy implements five types of filters, with, without, added, changed, and or. The with filter allows you to filter out components that have only a specific component on them without requesting access to that component and conflicting with other systems. The without system is very similar to the with system but in reverse, allowing for you to filter out any object that has a specified component without requesting access. Added will filter out any object that did not have that specified component added to it since the last time this system was run. Changed is the same as added, but is simply that the component has been flagged as changed since the last time this query was required. The OR filter is used in conjunction with the other filters to create a compound filter 
This is done by putting any of the other parameters inside the OR parentheses. This can be changed with up to 16 other filters. To do an AND, this is done by simply wrapping multiple filters in a tuple inside the parameter of the query or subfilter of the OR. Bevy uses the reference type that was provided to determine what type of query you are trying to make, mutable or not mutable. This information is used by the scheduler. As seen in this example, these two queries are either mutable or not mutable based on whether their input parameter is a reference to transform or a reference to a mute transform. It is best practice to use unmutable queries wherever possible so that other systems can run in parallel without having to wait for your system for one system to finish. As of making this video, Bevy implements five helpers for using a query. The get, the, the iter for the for each, the parallel for each, and the iterated combinations. To use a query in a system, you make one of the system parameters a query, and then for what that query is querying for, and any filter that applies to that query. It is important to note in Bevy you cannot have conflicting queries in one system. This example here would not actually work because it is requesting both unmutable and mutable access to a transform that overlap. If I was to swap the second query to a without player, it would work because the, it would be impossible to get mutable access to the player and immutable access because the it is impossible for one object to have to both have and not have a component. Once I have acquired my query, I can use any of the built-in query function in order to use it. The get function returns the query result for the specified entity provided, or none if it doesn't exist. I could use an iterator to go over all matching objects in the query, and then do a thing with the resulting component. If you're using a query that is using a tuple of multiple components, you can unwrap that tuple in the for declaration and then use those named fields in the loop. The for each loop is the same as the iterator, but slightly more optimizable by the compiler. But you sacrifice the ability to modify the future state of other iterations. The par for each method is used for if you want to run some function in parallel. This works by providing a task pool, which can be a system parameter, a batch size, and then the function that is run. This will use all the threads in the task pool to create an iterator that runs in parallel, running your function on each thread until it is done. The, the query iter combinators lets you specify a K, which is the permutation type. This will return an iterator over the query in that provides a combination of all queries in the set in matches of k. This would mean that if you put two in that place, it would give you every single combination of two unique results. This has some restrictions, such as if k is greater than the number of results, then you will get zero permutations. And if k is equal to the number of results, you will only get one permutation being everything in the iterator in one go. Bevy also implements a subset of the get function called single. Calling the single function will return the result of the query if there is exactly one result in the query, otherwise it will panic. There is a get variant of this function that will return a result type where the OK variant will be the result of exactly one match in the query and the error will tell you whether there were no matches or multiple matches in the query. All these functions have a mutable variant if that is required for the query. In this example, I have a system that moves all the balls on the screen. In this system declaration, I call a query that gives me mutable access to the transform, immutable access to the speed, and mutable access to the direction. I then apply a filter to only return results with my component example on it. This is used as a flag so that I can have systems that affect specifically the balls in the scene and not everything that has a speed and a direction. I then create a mutable iterator where I wrap the transform speed and direction in a tuple so, that, so they unwrapped in the body of the iterator. I then treat, 
I then treat the results as nothing more than their corresponding reference type. In this system, I query for all balls that have a mutable speed. This is another example of using the width component. In this particular example, it is extra important because there may be multiple things in the world that have a speed, but I only want to be affecting things that are relevant to this system. This system then iterates through all of the balls, multiplying their speed if the timer has elapsed, or dividing it by two if it was already doubled. In this example, I have a system that makes sure that the player is not colliding with any of the objects in the world. If they are, they are moved outside of the collision. The first thing I do is query for the transform and size of the player using the with player filter. I then, in order to have a non-conflicting query, use the without player filter to get all other transforms with a size in the world. I then separate out my player transform and size using the player query dot single mute. This is a valid use of this function because there should only be one player in the world at any one time in this game. You may have to do different logic if you had a multiplayer game with multiple players. I then split out the transform and size of the normal objects and iterate over them. While iterating over them, I'd run an if collision check providing the player transform size and the object transform and size. If the player collided, use a move player trans and provide that with the transform and size. And I have not provided examples of how you would do the collision check or the player move, but their signature would simply be references to the types provided by the query. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I just went over 100 subscribers, so that is great. Thank you all so much. Your support is much appreciated.